one of the most beloved Razorbacks in recent memory, former Hog Daniel Gafford, is turning his NBA dreams into reality. THV 11's Dorian Cramp went to Miami to talk to Daniel and about his journey from El Dorado to the draft. Uh, it's something Daniel Gafford says he never got to do. He's recapping his Razorback career in his own words and telling us how he wants to say goodbye to Razorback fans. Miami Beach, water sparkles, palm trees wave, boats cut across the ocean. In this seaside paradise, many come to find rest and relaxation. Uh, Daniel uh, Gafford comes uh, to prepare. The lone person along this strip of sandy shore, Gafford trains for the NBA, each stride carrying him closer to the next step in his career. More than 1,300 miles from Fayetteville, Gafford has the distance he needs to reflect on his Razorback career. I didn't regret it at all because, I mean, I came back for a reason. I came back to play at Arkansas for one more year, and I came back to mature more and be ready for this process. And distance lends itself to perspective. I know it was a lot of things I could have done better at Arkansas. You gonna speed up the time like that? Looking back, yeah, I seen some stuff and dealing with the people from the program with the training and stuff, they showed me things I could have done better and things I could have actually done in certain times in those games that could have helped us out a lot. You're the team's leading scorer, leading rebounder. You honestly feel that you didn't do enough? I was, you know, the one guy that they looked to every time and I never came up sometimes for some games. It was like most of the games that we played were real big games. And most of those games, I didn't show up. Come on, Dan. Get him out. Get him out. Accepting this piece of his legacy is the maturity Gafford wanted to gain when he returned to Fayetteville following his freshman year. During the season, it used to, it used to dwell on me a lot. But as you know, I'm growing as a person. You tend to mature. You tend to just let that brush off your shoulder. The losses, though disappointing, are part of the game. There's something professionals, like the one Gafford will become, learn how to live with. But there's one thing that Daniel Gafford didn't get to do, to say goodbye on his own terms. Can you walk me through how you told Mike Anderson and how he took the news that you were leaving? He took it pretty hard. But I mean, as a coach, he basically let, you know, let me know his side of, you know, how he feels about it. But Gafford says they never discussed what happened next. Did he give you any indication that he was going to say that or did that catch you off guard? No, it caught me off guard. Yeah, I, was, I didn't even expect it to be like a press conference that day, to be honest, until um, Mike Haywood had told me. I felt like I could have had some more time to, you know, figure out how I wanted to tell everybody and, you know, build up to it. You know what I mean? It happened the way it did and you can't change it. I mean, I don't have any hard feelings. I mean, they got out there. It was either going to get out there with me or with them. I wanted it to be with me, but they put it out there first. And you have the opportunity now. What would you like to say to Razorback fans? No, I mean, thank you for the love and support that they, that they always gave to me night in and night out through hard fought games. I mean, you know, this, <laughs> the fans, the actual fans that's out there that actually, you know, gave their hearts to the team. They know who they are. I mean, thank you for all the things that they did for the team. As Daniel Gafford moves on towards the draft, he shows us just what it takes to be a prize NBA prospect. In part two of our series, Daniel's journey from El Dorado to the draft, which continues tomorrow night at 10 o'clock.